the test averages that you had had. Polynomial operations was the best. Counted it as a, either a big quiz or a small test, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker uh, with the idea that you probably did fine on there, but I will give you a chance to let me go back and ask something if you need me to go back. So, all right, so one example of adding. If these parentheses bother you, you know one way to get rid of parentheses is just to distribute. So there's no number out front, so that's like a positive one. You can do that if you want to. And it's basically like combining like terms. Add your z squares together, add your z's together, and add your constants together. Okay, so subtracting is basically the same thing. So I tried to pick out the one that was a little bit harder. And I think this is the same question from um, a test review from back then. So if you were actually looking through your binder, you probably saw what the answer was and you had a good way to check. But same thing, to get rid of these parentheses, if you want to take a step and distribute a one, that doesn't change any of that stuff because one times anything is just this stuff. But this is subtract all of it. So this is going to change all of these signs. So this is what it might be a good idea. Okay, so I know it's messier. Uh, more different types of terms, but it still now boils down to combining the terms. So this is where I think it helps to underline. These are some x cubed y cubes. These are some x cubed y cubes. So I think that's the only ones that I see. So three of them plus one of them should give you seven of them. Um, okay, these are x squared y squared. These are x squared, y squared, so they're the same type of term. So five of them minus one of them gives you four of them. And in the order that you have your terms in doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. Uh, x squared, y, x squared, y, but plus one minus one, those two would cancel out and go to zero. And x, y squared, looks like there's only one of those. Six, three aces and three aces, and then constant two minus four, which would be negative two. Uh, part of the hardest part of that question is just keeping up with all of it. So, again, the terms can be in a different order. It doesn't say it needs to be in standard form or anything, so that's fine. But um, if you didn't get this, you might need to take my time underlining what you used so that you can see what you may have overlooked. The next two questions are about multiplying. So adding and subtracting is good, but if you can't add and subtract, then you often can't uh, do multiplication or division anyway, so it kind of carries over. So if you want to take two terms times three terms, FOIL doesn't really make sense here. But I can take the 2x times each of these three. Five y times each of these three. So everything here gets multiplied to everything here. Two terms times three terms should give us six terms. Okay, and then we should be able to finish it off to three, four, five, six by combining like terms. So Let's stick these are my x cubes. Uh, x squared y's and x squared y's. So negative 4 of them plus 15 of them. x y squareds and x y squareds. And 
twenty y cubes that both of them have nothing combined with. So those four terms as well as you can not. If something is squared, this is I've heard, this is a very common thing that they ask on the ACT. It is two things is to square the three A and square the two B. It doesn't work like that. It means you've got a three A minus two B times a three A minus two B. So, yes, you're squaring 3a, and yes, you're squaring negative 2b, but you also have these two multiplied and those two multiplied. So if you didn't actually FOIL that out, you're not going to have this middle term. Three and six were about division. <clears throat> so remember, fraction part just really means division. And so one of the questions I had is, can I factor this and cancel out terms? And yes, you can do that if the factors, um, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. That's a lot of times it does happen because we were questioned about to do that. Um, I suspected you don't have to do this one with synthetic division because long division always works. But I suspected that you did synthetic division. Where the divisor equals zero goes here, the coefficients in order go there. Make sure you put zero if you're missing anything. And then add down and multiply. Add down and multiply. And add in and multiply. And add down. And then you can turn these into your answer. This is supposed to be your remainder, so that's your constant, so that's your x's, this is your x squared. The remainder needs to be put over the divisor. Same thing you should get from long division, though. Even if you wanted to do synthetic division number three, you can't because it's not set up correctly. So you have to do long division here. I made one little small change, which I guess is not 100% necessary, but it certainly could make the question easier. This new writer wants it in standard form, so I'll switch to these two, which is perfectly fine. Moving those around doesn't change it at all. So long division, you have to ask yourself what times 2x gives me 2x cubed. So the first part of your answer is going to be 2x. This 2x times x squared gives you 2x cubed. But then you also have to multiply to this and to this. And you're actually subtracting all of this. And in my experience, you guys often subtract this one, but then add those. So what I tried to convince you to do was to just train yourself to change the signs and add instead. Change the signs makes this 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. If you see that you're off there, it's probably that you didn't change the signs and or you didn't subtract. That's where I'm concerned. Alright, so that's all it is to long division. We just have to repeat those steps a couple more times. The next piece would be 3, because 3x three squared, or 3 times x squared gives me 3x squared. But I'm also going to do it times this, and times this. I need to subtract all of this. Is the same as switching the size to negative 8x plus 10. And now for this question, it's a pretty nasty remainder, but that's our remainder. So, quotient plus remainder is put over the divisor. Just like over here. Remainder got put over the divisor. All the remainder gets put over all the divisor. Right. And then I mixed in uh, some leading coefficient test stuff. So I'm going to draw all these out, but in the back of my head, I'm thinking about positive x squared, negative x squared, positive x cubed, and negative x cubed. You know what those four graphs look like? You can find the end of your any polynomial function. 
credibility and coefficients positive or negative, and if the degree is even number or if the degree is an odd number. So positive leading coefficient, even degree, it's going to have the same impact as this one. Down to the left, up to the right. Negative leading coefficient, even degree, it's going to have the same thing as any of any of x squared. Down to the left, down to the right. Positive leading coefficient, even degree, would have the same in behavior as positive x squared. Up and up. And the only other possibility, so a semester test probably wouldn't give you all four of these. Uh, if you can do all four of these, you should be fine with whatever you do see. Negative leading coefficient, odd degree, that would be the same in behavior as this. Up to the left, down to the right. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty quick, but as I said, I give you a chance to speak up and say anything in there that I went too fast on that you want me to go back over. Any specific questions from these question types?